I think what's really important for us as women in business, particularly in financial services, is to look at the impact we can have, uh, well, what impact this has on our lives, but certainly what impact we can have on other women in terms of the way that we uh, influence uh, that circle of people who are close to us or who we uh, report to or who report into us. So I wanted to kick the conversation with that sort of context of really asking you, Krasanthi, uh, and Pearl, I see you've got your your uh, sound there, so welcome. Um, as, as, as women who have both had incredibly successful careers in finance, um, what are the key challenges that have faced you uh, on this journey uh, into into senior positions in the banking and financial services industry? So, Krasanthi, if you want to kick off, and then Paul, I'd love to hear from you. Sure. Thanks, Louisa. Um, I think the challenges I've faced throughout my career is always that I've had to prove myself. I mean, um, I've always had to, to know what I'm talking about. I've always had to be assertive and very clear in terms of, you know, I've obviously I started my career in finance. So, you know, you have to know your numbers. You have to know what you're talking about. And also, um, you've got to be assertive in what you're saying. You've got to know what you're saying. And because you are always speaking to the other side, it's, it's normally a male, you've got to make sure that you're speaking at their level in terms of, obviously, because they're, they're relatively senior to you. I think it's my challenges has always been I've always had to be at top of my game. I've had to make sure that I know exactly what I want, exactly what I'm saying, have the facts and and show that I am basically capable. I think that has been the, the biggest challenge is, is that, um, is to make sure that I'm on the same level as, as any male in, in the room. Pearl, what has your experience been as you've sort of climbed the corporate ladder and broken through those glass ceilings that we all are so very aware of? Yeah, thank you very much, Louisa. And um, I think um, Christine might have touched on what I was I was also thinking about. And I think you just sum it up saying, yes, uh, being too much aware of yourself, self-judging, trying to not make mistakes, as if you are carrying a whole generation on your head and making sure that uh, you do what is right. It's quite exhausting and very stressful. And sometimes takes you out of yourself as, as, as a person. So constantly keeping your emotion in check, constantly making sure that your words are right. Um, you are not being too strong. You are not being too soft. And you are not being too manly. And you are not being too woman. It's, 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 it hasn't been easy. And for me, it's also... Um, there are a lot of things. It's like there's a whole self-book of how women should talk, lead, behave in certain situations. And I believe that some of these things are actually stereotypes that we normally do talk about. But even in a world where, especially in the corporate world, making sure that where you walk, um, you turn back to make sure it is step on in. What you say, I sleep in the night and I ask myself, when I met this person, did I use the right words? Was I too bullish? Um, during the meeting, was I showing up too much? And uh, in situations where you are told stop being emotional and you are just being passionate. Go for it, Prasanthi. Yeah, so I just want to add, I think, you know, as women, we've always been told, like Paul's mentioned, how to PA. But I think if women are just told to behave like we're supposed to behave, like women that we are, I think we'd actually add more value than being told on how not to act. I mean, we must just be women. Um, yes, we are emotional. Sometimes emotion is needed. Um, you know, sometimes we women, uh, we can't hide who we are. We have to be who we are and then just just carry on and do do what we have to do. I mean, the job will get done. I mean, that's what women make sure of. We just get the job done. So, yeah. So, th so this is such. This is so interesting because I, I, I'm not sure what the gender split is in our audience today, um, but generally, I think structurally, the this industry, and I, I think you you mentioned it, uh, Paul, is that that there are more men in the financial services sector than there are women, uh, certainly more uh, in in positions of leadership. Um, so, what are, what do you think the barriers are? in regards to women entering 
this sector and women sort of rising up into positions of leadership in the finance sector particularly. Are there any other structural or any other sort of um, things, factors that really prevent women from entering the, the industry in the first place? For me, I, I think, and like you rightly stated, this is a, a naturally male-dominated um, industry. And I think it goes as far back as um, banking or financial sector, as we call it now, being one of the oldest um, profession. And when it started, it started as like a barter system and was naturally a male-dominated environment. So as it transformed and met continuously metamorphosis, metamorphosis into having the male at the, at the top end of the pyramid and women entering from the base. Um, I don't think there's a clearly well deliberate intentional barrier but it's, it's, it's there. And for me, um, there are certain things that keep probably widening the, the, the kind of the nets and seeing that disparity. So for instance, I call this the pause in women's life. Um, you enter a, a, an industry that is fast changing, transforming itself so much, and you need to stay up ahead because you need to also climb the ladder. And then the pause. The pause is the time where you have to raise family. You need to give birth. It's natural. And when you come back after giving birth, um, a lot of things matter. Now the balance between making sure that you, you, you are a power with your male counterpart who might not have this situation becomes more difficult for you to catch up. So for me, it's, 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 it's that pause. It is also that constant need to be learning because as a financial is, um, industry, the technological advancement is, is so sharp and so fast as consumer behaviors are changing. So consistently learning and also dealing with raising a family, um, self-checking yourself, is too much. Chris, Anthony, I'm, I'm sure Pearl will come back in a moment. Um, have you had similar uh, a similar experience in in the financial services uh, businesses that you've you've been involved in? Is it a is it just that extra little bit of of a struggle for women to actually have that pause and then come back into the rat race and try and fight their way back up uh, the ladder? I, I think I think, I mean, I mean, like Paul rightfully said, I mean, financial interest industry has always been dominated by males, um, way back when. And I think recently, probably about the last maybe 10 years, we've seen more and more uh, women coming into, into higher positions. But it's always um, trying to fight the male dominance. And I don't think it's, a, it's the wrong thing. It's, it's just how it evolved. It evolved with, with, you know, with the men starting everything and and now they're at, at, at the forefront of the leadership. And now we've, we, the new, the new bees, as I call ourselves, are trying to get into, into the same leadership positions as the males who have been there for, for many years. I think the other barrier is this mindset of us, oh, we can't do it. You know, it's male dominance. So I'll just, you know, I'll play second, you know. But I don't think we should have that kind of thinking. It, it should, we should, as women, never self-doubt. We can do it. We've been able to manage work and life um, at lower levels. So if we become leaders, I don't think it should be any different. If we can manage it when, we, when we're starting out, you know, varsity and then also trying to get a job to pay for varsity, we should be able to, you know, take those learnings through into when we want to become a leader. I think the other barrier, and I hope over time we resolve it, is that we've never had a lot of, um, how do we say, mentors in the leadership position that are females that can actually mentor and push through um, younger leaders um, who are starting out to push them through into higher levels of, of leadership. And I'm not saying going from a first year graduate and putting them as a head of finance or as a head of marketing, but mentoring them and guiding them on how to actually um, work through the actual um, process of becoming a leader. Because you know, and it's also not right that we say it's, it's male dominance and therefore it's at fault. I just think it's the way it's evolved. I don't think it's a fault anymore. I think as women, we have the capacity and the capability to change it. I just think we need more of us. And the more we can mentor through the ranks, 
I think um, the more impact we can make. So, um, so even though there might have been barriers for us now, I think looking forward and trying to open up or get rid of the barriers, we need to take that initiative and, and, and get rid of those barriers and make it a, a free for all. It's such a, you're so right, is, is how do we help younger women to actually get onto that fast track and give them the skills uh, that they need in order to assume uh, roles, uh, leadership roles in the organization? Unfortunately, we, as women, we have a bad rep uh, in leadership in that we don't, uh, we, 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 we don't tend to actively support women on the way up. Um, I don't know if that's been your experience. I know, I, I think that it's also changed. I think the world has changed more. There's more awareness around gender parity and around supporting, you know, young talent. But Pearl, have you come across that in any of your experiences? That, um, that A, really supporting young women and giving them the tools, mentoring them through their growth, that, that really has an impact? Yes. Um... I, I, I've heard this and uh, I have my um, coaches and mentors and some of my male um, leaders that I really look up to saying there's no better time to be a woman than now mm -hmm. uh, in the corporate world. And it's, I think it's because of the how intentional and deliberate um, we are now, as Christine was touching on when I joined back, um, concerning um, trying to remove these barriers for, for us. I think the more visibility we creating around this, the more um, it gives us the opportunity to bring in more. But for me personally, I really think that I've fared well with, with men leaders and probably women um, leaders. Some of these, uh, I, I normally say women are their own enemies. Um, it's actually a word created by men to um, um, get us to have our internal friction. So when you are even mentoring or coaching a woman, they are, as a woman, there are certain things that they look um, up to you to do that they will not do that when a man is coaching them. So it kind of doesn't give that um, honesty between the two of between the two of us. So far as I'm concerned, if you are mentoring, you are coaching, it, it is more of a, a, a professional relationship trying to make sure that all the competencies are there. I've also moved from a lot more of mentoring and coaching to women raising women men, um, sponsors, advocates, and we trusting each other that when a woman is on the table and knows I have the competence and I have the technical capabilities, that woman will speak for me. So we having that advocate and he having believing and trusting that we have people who will be passionate about us in, in, an, in a very honest conversation is very important. But I think I have fared well with men um, coaches and sponsors than women. Absolutely. It's, it's modeling uh, and being the role model for success, but also being the mentor and the guide to, to bring women up. Do you think that that with the, the the lockdowns and the pandemic and everything that we've been through as as a global society um, that those things have changed? I mean, one of the stats that I heard horrified me is that um, the pandemic has had the most dramatic impact on women in the workplace because women have all of these responsibilities. They have to look after the home, the children, and they, uh, you know, sort of uh, look after their own careers. It's And with uh, a lot of the world, women in the world working from home and trying to balance all of those things. Um, has has that had any impact in your, on seeing that sort of, um, that passion for, you know, success and, and, and climbing up the ladder, is that as much of a priority nowadays or have, have women sort of reevaluated their lives that you're seeing? I think what the pandemic has learned, was taught us is that we can actually juggle both. Um, when we were working, you know, from office and then having to commute home, et cetera, we had to manage that in terms of dropping the kids off at school, rushing off to work, doing that, rushing back, picking up Back, in, back up from school. So that was pre, before COVID. Now with COVID, 
there were no like boundaries. Everyone's like in the same house, school's happening, um, you're working, kids are hungry, mom, I want food. So so it was a, it so what the pandemic taught us is we can actually manage it differently. There are different ways of how we can actually um, manage our work life balance with our children. And I think if we set clear boundaries, which as moms we normally do, but I think it, being in the same environment, I think if you set the boundaries up front, I think it worked. I think also now going back to the office, um, I think also I think our families appreciate us more because they see what we what we have to basically deal with, which is stuff at home with the children and you know cleaning the house and all of that. And at the same time, also trying to 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 do your day job. Um, so I think. Um, families appreciate mothers more because they can actually see how they're trying to balance everything. Um, but I think the lessons that we've learned during COVID, we shouldn't forget because going post-COVID, whatever the new normal is going to look like, I think those lessons we need to carry forward with us and, and improve on those. And it's taught us that we can't actually balance work and life because if we could do it before COVID, during COVID, I'm sure we can do it even better after COVID. Um, so, you know, that's my take on it. I think I've, you know, from, from my family perspective, they can see that it is hard being a woman and having to juggle everything. And, um, yeah, I think some of, you know, the men in the family also realize that they can also help out and they also need to balance their work life as well. And I think maybe, you know, it's brought us more supportive that, that men and women need to understand each other better when it comes to a work life balance. I, I, I agree with you, Christine. And for me, one of the words I use for the COVID and the changes in our work dynamics has been the flexibility and mm. that uh, access, accessibility is given us. So as I sit here, I have a, a very consistent um, um, fitness um, um, life now. I am able to work, I'm able to work, I'm able to go to the gym, and I'm still able to make sure that um, my staff goes to school and is spent. And uh, it's like juggling two balls at the same time. And for me, it's, it's first, it was very, very close to impossible. Now it is possible to, to be able to be in my car and have a very good meeting um, on my way, um, maybe before my gym or my way to drop in my cake and then coming back home. or being able to say, I'll take this meeting at this time and, and, and not really trying to run out of the house and all these things. So for me, I think it's that much that the flexibility is good in. One of the things I've enjoyed is also the ability to now learn other other things, um, read more, and, uh, and, and still be able to manage your time as if you have more than 24 hours. Which, which in a sense also has bled that into different things that we put in, in our lives. So now I can go on networking programs virtual and not really be able to stand and think, am I wearing the right things or it? So basically, am I saying, are they listening, are they hearing me? So for me, the flexibility is something that I'm, I've really enjoyed um, 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 using um, from uh, that uh, now you have to you decide whether I want to work home or I want to run away from the home. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I'm being, uh, what I'm doing. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Yeah, that's such such uh, amazing insight. So, so. Um, I'm, I'm really sorry that we've actually uh, come to uh, come to the end of our time. Um, I just I wondered if you would share just in closing um, what you believe are the the biggest challenge ahead for the next generation of female leaders in the financial services sector, and what advice you would give young women who are entering the sector today. Prasanthi, do you want to kick off with that? Sure, no problem. Um, from my perspective, uh, I think the biggest challenges are is, first of all, believe in yourself and always know what you want. I think if, if you have that embedded in your mind and in your heart and you know what you want, challenge number one is sorted because then you know what you're going for. Um, and then I think the rest of the challenges are, are, are really just what the industry will challenge you with. Always know your facts, know what, what, you, what you're talking about. Um, 
do not get offended just because you're a woman and someone has spoken horrible to you or whatever. Don't get offended. Keep true to who you are. Um, and I think really make sure you know what you want and what you want to say and be assertive. And at the end of the day, if it's really what you want, go for it. You have every competency and every capability to achieve it. I think also um, some advice, you know, for, for younger ladies and wanting to to progress in the, in the industry is find a mentor, find a, 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 even if it's a gentleman that, you know, kind of is willing to support. I mean, find a mentor to try and mentor you through because it is very difficult in the financial industry, never mind just the working with, with such a diverse population and diverse personalities within the financial industry that I think a mentor does help, even if it's just to bounce off an idea or, or, or something to that effect. And then I think the, the other uh, advice I would get would give a person is, if you fail once, it doesn't mean it's the end. Try again and succeed. You will. It will. It will happen. I don't. If you take a step backwards, and you'll take two steps forward. So I just think, carry on and, and believe in what you want to achieve. And and I think that for me ha, has really um, stood me well. It, it, it's been a journey. It's there's been hard times and good times. But at the end of the day, um, if it's where if I wanted to, what I wanted to achieve, I've achieved. And you know, that's what we basically um, need to always remember is the output. Where do we want to go and what do we really want to achieve? So, yeah, that's that's my, my recommendation and, and my, my thoughts on, on, on leadership for women. Thank you, Prasanti. Um, I, I, tot I totally agree with you, Prasanti. And uh, I will say that with opportunities that and visibilities now that uh, we're creating for, for women in, in in banking and in corporate world also comes a lot of obligations on, on us as a young woman who, who wants to climb the corporate ladder in banking. So it is your self, um, the self-learning. How do you learn and learn, relearn, and make sure you are abreast with what is happening in the banking industry. There are so many opportunities um, in the banking industry now looking for um, there are tech parties, technology, um, data analytics, and machine. There are a lot of things. This is one of the fastest changing industry. So how ready are you? And yes. that is your, is the responsibility that is being placed on us to be ready, to learn, to be abreast. I also think that, yes, find a mentor, recruit a sponsor, and tell your story very well and get people to advocate for you because at that table when you are taking the decisions, you are not there. But how good are you that you are able to get someone to speak for you because you have shown how great you are. So um, let's transcend beyond the mentorship and turning these mentors into advocates uh, and becoming sponsors for you is very, very important. And uh, my last thing will be, it's not okay to do this. Be you. It's okay to be assertive. It's okay to speak your mind. It's okay to make an impact. It's okay to be intelligent, to have a different opinion to the popular opinion. Don't shut up. Speak. I love that. Thank you, Paula. It's okay to be a woman, in other words. It's okay. <laughs> it is okay. And, and I think that, I think the world over, in every industry, um, uh, corporate, uh, uh, executives and boards are realizing the power of diversity at leadership levels in organizations. The richness of experience uh, reflecting the richness of society and my recognition to, to young women who are looking to get into this industry is this is one of the few industries in the world where you can actually make a meaningful difference to people's lives. So it's worth pursuing and it's worth continuing on your journey uh, and, and adding value to, to society in which you live. So I really just want to thank you, Prasanthi Pearl. You've been amazing. It's been a wonderful conversation. We could talk forever, but our <laughs> next panel is waiting in the wings. So thank you so much for your time and uh, take care. Thank you thank very you much. Very much.